All right, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the Monday Night YouTube Live. Um, lots to go over tonight. Market is markets in turmoil. You know, the, to to steal the CNBC slogan. Um, I guess let's start there. Um, actually, let me. Uh, oh, so fully loaded agenda. Welcome back. Let me just kind of, before I get too excited and get too far ahead, um, would like to welcome everybody. We're doing these Monday night YouTube lives every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to, if you like them, if you enjoy them, subscribe. And then the big thing is ring the bell. Ring that bell. That way you get notified. Right now, we're doing once a week, but... I tell you, thanks to you, all of you, these are really growing. I mean, the the, the views um, are, are, you know, 10, 20% higher each week. So thank you for that. I, 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 I'm, I, I appreciate that you guys and gals, remember if I say guys, just because I'm a dumb Midwesterner, but uh, guys and gals, I appreciate that you all, all you all <laughs> enjoy these videos. But uh, but anyway, ring that bell. You'll because we may start doing more because they're growing, and we get a lot of requests for these. That way, you'll get notified as soon as we go live. So that being said, the format for tonight, we're, we we go go go. Okay, we're gonna get after it tonight like usual. We're probably gonna do about fifteen minutes of my agenda. I've got my index cards. I think they're. I think it shows up reverse, and you probably could you probably couldn't read my handwriting if it was written straight. But uh, you know, I like to say my handwriting is encrypted. But anyway, uh, got a lot to talk about tonight, and then the second half will be Q and A. So drop those questions in chat. Welcome everyone. Let's get to work. Um, screen share. There we go, share, and let's start out with the SPY. So a couple of things I want to talk about. I mean, markets are shaky, no doubt. It's been frustrating last week and then kind of following into this week, been kind of annoying with, you know, and, and remember as traders, we don't really care if the market goes up or goes down. We will react and we will act accordingly. But you can tell, obviously, the trend is down. I mean, you look at this is the 10-day, five-minute chart of the SPY. And obviously, it's pretty clear the trend is down. But the reason I say annoying and choppy is, I mean, look at all these days where we, we gap down and then grind back, gap down, grind back, gap down, grind back. And even though the overall trend is down, it's just so choppy. Now, the good news is a lot of you guys have been talking about KBLB, I see. The great thing about stuff like KBLB, doesn't care what the overall market is doing. But the reason I want to talk about the SPY and the China tariffs and all this stuff is... The bummer is we like to talk a lot about swing trades in these YouTube lives, higher price stocks, quote unquote, better quality stocks. And man, they're, the swing trade setups kind of few and far between the last week. Now, beauty of KBLB, I mean, KBLB is the honey badger. You know, I'm sure you've all watched, You, I hope all of you have watched the honey badger video. If you haven't, 
the honey badger video is required watching. But so, but but you know, the funny thing is, and, and we're not gonna watch it. I'm just gonna bring it up. So so if you have never watched the honey badger video, you need to watch it. And the honey badger is KBLB. KBLB don't care about anything, just like the honey badger don't care. So anyway, the point is, and we'll move on with my agenda. If you're a swing trader, you know, if you like these multi-day, multi-week type ideas, be careful right now. I mean, you can have a nice looking setup and then the market gaps down by two, three percent and it ruins your setup. So point is higher priced, longer term, be careful right now. Next thing I want to talk about is the Beyond the PDT podcast, okay? Um, beyond, PD, beyond the PDT.com. A um, couple awesome young guys. So um, I recorded with them tonight. So just a couple hours ago, did a podcast with these guys. Man, love their energy. Young guys passionate about trading, passionate about learning, you know, full disclosure, I get, I get nothing. Stocks and trade gets nothing for promoting this podcast, but I love what they're doing. They're doing what we're trying to do with steady trade where, where we're trying to help, you know, if here's the thing, steadytrade.com free podcast beyond the PDT free podcast. You know, if you're a new trader with a couple thousand dollar account, simple fact is you got to keep your expenses low. I mean, buying educational materials, I think there's no better investment than investment in yourself. But I mean, I get it. If you got two grand in your account, you got a thousand bucks in your account, you got to be really, really, really frugal with how you're spending your money. So, I wanted to bring these guys up because I think they're doing great work. They're and 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 it's free. That's the beauty of it. So check out Beyond the PDT. Had a blast tonight. I don't know when the episode will be out. Probably a week or so. But uh, keep an eye out for the episode with me. We um, um these guys. We had fun. They they were good guys. So um, that being said, speaking of KBLB. Um, SteadyTrade.com, I think it is two episodes ago, was the episode with Jack Kellogg. Man, I think I've talked about it on these YouTube lives, but this kid, um, yeah, it was last week's episode, so May 6th. Um, man, this kid, I know I'm this salty old veteran, you know. I'm 85 years old. I've been around the block. You know, I've, I've seen it all, done it all, whatever. But this kid, you know, I'm proud of all of the podcasts. But if you've never listened to Steady Trade, if you if you don't have time for 97 episodes, please check out this one with Jack Kellogg. I mean, especially if, I mean, it's, especially if you're young, and you're trying to make this work, this kid's work ethic is, I mean, I, I said it in the episode. I got freaking goosebumps talking to this kid. So check that out, Trading OTCs with Jack Kellogg. Now, let's, one more announcement, and then we're going we're gonna to tie in to KBLB and why it ties in with Jack Kellogg and, and Trading OTC Gappers. Last thing I want you to know, the level two webinar I did last week. Um, and you can see stockstotrade.com slash webinar replay. You can see that up above. Yep, I can see it on my iPad. So I enjoyed this. It's a one hour webinar, breaking down level two and level one. Um, we, we broke down the level two box as well as how it re relates to the tape and the prints. This is only free until next week's webinar. So you got eight days. Um, 
it's free. You know, like I said, beyond the PVT steady trade, these twice week or twice monthly webinars, if you're wondering about level two, if you're wondering about how to interpret it, if you're wondering about how much you should care, stocksatrade.com slash webinar dash replay. Uh, all right, let's get to KBLB and why this was so beautiful. Um, so let's talk about OTC gappers, multi-day, multi-week, multi-month breakout, multi-year breakouts, which I, I promised no more links, but Papa John, this week's episode, Papa John loves these OTCs as well. So another link, even though I promise you no more links, but the latest today's episode with Papa John, he talks about OTCs a lot too. Um, anyway, why is KBLB so attractive? Why do we care? Why is this? Why was this the Money Monday stock of the week? I mean, you can go back to April 17th was the first big day. Now, the beauty of these of this pattern, I mean, this is I mean, this pattern's freaking amazing, but the beauty of this pattern is you can miss this thing day one. I mean, if you missed it day one and you're like, oh, dang, I missed KBLB, go from six cents to 12 cents. Dang, I missed the 100% runner. The beauty is when you've got these OTCs at multi-year highs and they have that big day, if you miss it, you put that thing on watch and you get ready for when it breaks again. And so after the 17th, you had one, two, three, four, five days of nothing. But if you had your alerts, if you were watching it every day, I mean, I know it's not fun. I mean, nobody wants to hear, oh, geez, I got to watch the stock for five days to wait for it to break out. That's so boring. Come on, Tim. I want to make a thousand bucks today. Give me it. Markets are closed, but I want to make money at 813 Eastern. Give me a pick, baby. Give me something to buy, even though you can't buy any stocks right now because the market's closed. Give me, give me, give me. Well, you want to give me, you wait for something like KBLB at multi-year highs to break out again. And then on the 29th, this thing hits 52-week highs again. Rips multiple days, two, three days in a row. You could have missed it there. May 6th hit a new high day or new 52 week high, broke out, huge candle, went dormant. Then last week, Friday hits a new 52 week high, gaps up today, and then closes and gaps up grinds higher all day and closes within like a penny of the high of the day. What is it? Sorry, two cents off the high of the day. Two cents. So you don't have to, you, the, the point is you can trade them day one when they break out, but if you miss them, don't let them fall off your radar. And look at this thing. Let, okay, let's go five years. Highest point in five years. Let's go 10 years. Highest point in 10 years. 20-year breakout. <laughs> I, I didn't – well, this thing only traded back to 2008. Oh, geez, only an 11-year breakout. But look at how these levels come into play too. You could have missed, what, 400% of the move from $0.05 cents to $0.20. Cents. And then it broke 10-year highs. Now, I, I, I want to be clear. It's not like you get one of these every day, okay? Tomorrow? Well, KBLB may be tomorrow's KBLB. But the point is... We don't get one of these every day, but when you get a multi-year high 
in an OTC stock with news and unusual volume, if you got a small account, man, you need to be focused on this thing. Last thing I want to talk about is WKHS and my favorite VWAP hold high of day break pattern. Um, and then we'll hit Q&A. So last week, this thing spiked early. Actually, let me bring up a save chart. So screenshot this if you want. Rewatch if you want. But on your screen is WKHS from the 8th, May 8th. Um, this pattern was one of our favorite patterns for literally years. It's kind of dried up recently. But if you can be ready, if you can be prepared, if you got your alerts, your scans, everything ready, you can nail these things. And, and remember, I am not talking about buying WKHS at 90 cents when it first spiked at 1130 in the morning when there was a Trump tweet there was a tie-in with the GM plant in Ohio. I mean, amazing news. You don't have to buy the first move. The first move could be the wrong move. What I love about this pattern and why I want you to screenshot it, you got this big gainer early, and it just consolidates around VWAP for four and a half hours and then breaks on volume into the 2 p.m. window. Now, we used to get... It seemed like one, two, well, sorry, back up. We used to get three or four of these a week. They've been a little less prevalent lately. But I'm telling you, if you're a part-time trader, this is what you want to look for. If you show up back up at your computer at 2 o'clock and this big gainer is holding VWAP and it's got news, you get that high daybreak and they don't all work, okay? I mean, I'm not telling you every one of these works 100% of the time. If they all worked 100% of the time, I'd be doing this webinar from my trillion-dollar battleship yacht, okay? If I had a yacht, if it, I don't know if I would want a yacht. I mean, it's not really my style. But if I did have a yacht, it'd probably be like an aircraft carrier or something. Ooh, that'd be pretty cool. But like a bunch of big, big cannons. And some F-14s. Now, that would be pretty cool. If I had a yacht, it'd be an aircraft carrier. But anyway, if they worked 100% of the time, I would have a trillion-dollar yacht slash aircraft carrier. But the point is, you get that break to the high of the day. You can risk a failed breakout. You can risk VWAP. It's a high risk to reward setup. So look for volume. Look for early day spikes. Look for consolidations around VWAP and then that 2 p.m. break. And here's the beauty of it, okay? I'm not sure if you can see my cursor as I go back and forth. If you have a job, if you are a part-time trader, this stock is an ignore for four hours. You can get your work done. You can get your schoolwork done. You can take your kids to wherever they need to go. You can clean the house. Maybe you're a part-time trader that's a housewife, you know? You don't have to watch this thing for four hours. You can get done the stuff you need to get. And then if it fails to break the high of the day, I mean, you just don't take the trade because the setup wasn't there. So screenshot that. Look for the next one. Keep an eye on KBLB. Um, and let's hit some Q&A. You mentioned glue is a potential long-term stock. Ooh, that was a while ago. Um, I don't think glue is doing much now. So, yes, I had talked about glue a lot back here when it broke out. But, uh, you know, simple reality is the market's always right. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, it was on the watch list. Let me bring up glue. Highly recommend Evernote. Man, I've mentioned glue 
88 times we've talked about glue. But the last time we talked about glue was April 7th, which at that point, I mean, it was at 52 week highs. So right where my cursor is hover hovering was the last time we talked about glue. And it did trickle up from there, but it's had a rough go of it since. So Brian, um, simple fact is only price pays, only the chart matters. Glue is broken for now. Now it would be nice to see glue maybe find support here in the nines, but based on what I see right now, I mean, look at that candle a couple days ago. That that candle on the seventh, brutal. That's a big yank. Oh, KBLB put out a SEC filing. What did they put out? You got a link, Dave? I'm not seeing that on KBLB. I guess we'll revisit markets closed. I'm not seeing that, but um, if you got a link, Dave, I'd like to see that. Uh, HMPQ. Um, is that that one cent weed stock? Nice pattern. Um, the only, this is what I don't like on HMPQ is right here. So you see what I'm looking at? HMPQ is basically right into resistance. Doesn't mean this can't go. Volume was great today. I mean, it's a penny stock, but still 130 million shares traded. I just don't like this resistance level where my cursor is hovering. Yeah, Gene, uh, I am... I am Ivanho, sorry, Ivan, or I am, I probably ditched or, or butchered your name. But yeah, Gene was a VWAP hold high day break on Friday as well. Good eye. For a newbie trader with a $2,000 account, what's a good position size I should take? Oh, man. Kind of, you know, it's always when you've got a small account, it's always difficult to answer these position size things because, you know, the simple fact is what I teach, what I preach is being conservative is, you know, consistent gains over time. But the simple fact is, Khalil, when you got a $2,000 account, you got to pretty much use almost all your buying power to make any difference. Please have a plan. Please stick to it. But the simple fact is you do have to go in pretty deep. I mean, you can't follow the, you know, the traditional investment advice is, you know, like 3% of your account in one position. Well, you can't do that. I mean, you, you would have what? That's a $60 position. You know, you're never going to move the needle with that. So, but what I would say... Khalil, you know, if it's a low float, crazy runner, you don't need a huge size. I mean, if you catch a BPTH that goes 20 bucks a share and you got 10 shares, you got a good day. So on the insane low float runners, you can go a little higher, but um, it's tough. You know, it, it's always, it's always a, a difficult balance to decide how much buying power you put in any one setup. But um, just never put your – here's the quote of the night, okay? And I, 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 I didn't coin this phrase, 
but just never put yourself in the position that you were wishing you know you were out okay don't put yourself in the position where you're like oh my god why did i put nineteen hundred dollars of buying power into this stock okay if you're gonna go nineteen hundred dollars of your buying power on a two thousand dollar account do it in a real stock you know do it in a roku or something you know an, an earnings winner so is stt gonna have an iphone app yes soon any advice on someone who cannot trade till after four? Ooh, Jim. Um, man, Jim, that's tough. You know, Jim, here's the thing, and this goes for everybody. I want all of you to be successful. I want every one of you to, to be a consistently profitable trader to be able to work from home like I do, to be able to travel like I do. I mean, to be able to have the freedom to do what you want. But Jim, I'm also a realist and you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you cannot trade till after hours, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really tough, man. Um, I'm not saying it can't be done. But you're really, and I actually joked about this on the podcast tonight. I mean, if you can only trade after hours, you're really giving a, bringing a knife to a gunfight, man. Um, I wish I had a different answer, Jim. I mean, Jim, I, I would love for you to be, to just be crushing it in the markets. But... I, I just, I wish I had a better answer for you, man. It's going to be tough. What I would tell you is save your money um, and do what you can to modify your schedule. You know, if, if you can, I don't know what your job is. Maybe you can go to second shift. Maybe you can go to third shift. You know, I don't know, but it's going to be tough. Can you do a webinar on how to manage risk to reward for us noobs? Um, John, I did that a couple months ago um, on one of the free webinars. So definitely keep an eye out for it. Alan Guo, great question. How do you find a style that suits you? Alan, try everything, but paper trade? or trade really small, okay? So try everything. Try buying breakouts. Try shorting earnings winners. Try shorting low floats, you know, try everything. But trade small, paper trade, and track, track, track religiously. Yeah, Sandro, you can, um, we have half a dozen brokers that you can trade directly from STT with. Um, Cade, let me get you that. Whoops. And we'll finish on this. And we're adding more, but currently, Ally, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers, and Tradier. So, and we're adding more. So right now, that's what we've got. Are there any traders that only trade PM markets? So you mean like afternoon? I am a Vineho. Elaborate if you can. I know a lot of traders that only trade the afternoon. I actually recommend, I highly recommend that to new traders, only trading the afternoon Eastern time. So Zach R says, I would suggest picking a consistent time of day and find a pattern that fits that time of day to start off with. Well said, Zach R. Zach R, 
you closed it out for us. He nailed it. Zach R., you're the MVP of tonight's webinar. Um, all right, everyone. It's 8.30 Eastern. It's almost my bedtime. Um, be cautious right now with swing trades. SPY's shaky, okay? It's not the best time for swing trades. Um, you know, you know, obviously you can trade anything, but stick to your plan, stick to your stop, okay? Um, check out the Beyond the PDT podcast. It's free. Those guys are rocking it. I think they got like 10 or 11 episodes and they just got started. Um, check out Steady Trade, especially the one with Jack Kellogg. I think it was really good. Gave me goosebumps. Um, level two webinar. You got eight days to watch that. We got a new webinar next week. Um, save that chart of WKHS. KBLB, Dave mentioned a filing after hours. Maybe the end of the run for KBLB. We'll see. But, but I leave you with this. If you miss KBLB and if there's a filing and it tanks tomorrow, so be it. But look for that next OTC multi-day, multi-week, multi-year breakout, okay? If it's the end for KBLB, you know, all these stocks come to an end, okay? All these penny stocks, it's musical chairs, okay? There's only been like two or three penny stocks to ever survive, okay? Like maybe... Whatever the number is, it's like a handful, okay, of any of these penny stocks that made it. But doesn't mean you can't trade them and do well. So if KBLB is done, let's get to work looking for that next OTC multi-month, multi-year breakout. Have a great night, my friends. Be cautious out there. Markets hate uncertainty. Yo, I, I just want this China stuff done let's put this to bed good or bad i believe in the american economy i believe in the american worker i believe in the entrepreneurial spirit of america okay and and, and if you're not in america you know again i'm patriotic i love my country i think we're the greatest country in the world doesn't mean i don't like your country doesn't mean i don't love your economy but i think we're the greatest country in the world sorry and Let's put this trade war to bed. Let's put the get back to work. And I truly think it's the best time in history. And it will play out over time. But when you've got all these rumors and stuff, trade carefully. Uh, have a great night, everyone. I appreciate all of this. Um, again, really appreciate these things growing. So see you next Monday night. Check out all the resources I told you about. And have a great evening, everyone.